The Toronto that I was born into looked, almost everyone looked like me. From the mid-70s on, with the change of the Immigration Act, we opened the doors to the world. And today there are over 200 languages spoken on the streets of Toronto. We are very much a cosmopolitan city. Uh, and basketball, more than the other two sports, or three major sports, is a cosmopolitan sport. People come here from uh, the Middle East, from Africa, from Asia. They can all connect with basketball. They can't do that with hockey, regrettably, uh, or with football, and only some of them with baseball. But basketball is the one sport that plugs in to all of these people from all the disparate places in the world here in Toronto. The caliber of play will capture the attention of the older folks, but the, the buzz, you know, the Drake brings, the, the coolness, that, uh, the cool factor that, that uh, he brings to the game, uh, ties the young generation in with it as well. So um, it, it's something that only hockey had at one point in this town and that's attention from the youngest to the oldest. I think Drake uh, is the personification of contemporary Toronto. He's young, he's multicultural, uh, he's artistic, uh, and he hasn't lost his roots. Uh, a lot of artists, a lot of entertainers when they become really internationally successful, sort of move away, but he's stayed connected to the city. The city has fallen in love with the Raptors, there's no question about it. Um, and part of that affection, I think, has been generated by DeRozan and Lowry. I've had the chance to meet these guys socially and at uh, public events, and they are terrific spokespersons, not only for the Raptors, but for basketball in general. And I was pleased, uh, as the uh, de facto mayor of the city, for a short while in the previous administration, to work closely with the Raptors. Tim Lewicki was the guy that was in charge at that time on uh, building the uh, Raptors training facility in Exhibition Place. And if you have a chance to see it, if it's open, go and see it. it there isn't a training facility in basketball that can, can compare to this. You might want to go to the Royal Ontario Museum. Uh, if you have a chance, we have a world, and, but it's out on the outskirts, we have a world-class zoo. Um, go up the CN Tower, one of the tallest buildings in the world, and get a chance to look out not only on, on Toronto, but the province. You can see New York State from here uh, as well. Um, the longest underground pathway, retail pathway in the world, lies under the streets of downtown Toronto. 20 miles of shopping. So, uh, guys, if you brought your wife or your girlfriend, um, if you're enjoying the game and they're looking for places to shop, that underground pathway, especially in cold weather like this, is a fabulous uh, experience. If you're dining, um, the best steakhouse in town is Barbarians. And if you go there, ask to see his million dollar wine cellar. Uh, Aaron Barbarian has collected a huge number of the finest wines uh, in the world. And he stacks them in a cellar with uh, I don't know, walls that go up 30 or 40 feet. It's something to see. Um, Harbor 60 right beside the Air Canada Centre. Classy, um, elegant um, dining establishment. If you want uh, Asian fusion in a, in a club atmosphere, a spice route, just over here on uh, King and Spadina. If you're looking for uh, uh, the, the newest restaurant with cutting edge um, cuisine, then uh, Drake's Flings. He's in partnership with one of the leading uh, Chinese chefs uh, in Toronto. So those are some of the places uh, that I'd recommend. Drake has a great album for you? No, I wish. I, and it, even if he had, I'd have to shoot you.